Well, hi, everyone. My name is Jim Fister. I'm the co-manager of the Artist Gallery Sun River and the curator for the Betty Gray Gallery at the Sun River Resort. The Artist Gallery Sun River, in conjunction with Cascade A&E Magazine and Connect Central Oregon, are providing you a series of artist discussions. So we'd like you to enjoy this, and we look forward to getting your feedback. Hi everyone, my name is Jim Fister. I'm co-owner and co-manager of the Artist Gallery Sun River. I'm also the curator of the, Betty, of the Betty Gray Gallery at the Sun River Lodge for the Sun River Resort. With me today is uh, a current exhibitor, Mark Shelton. Uh, say hi, Mark. Hi, how are you? How are you? Uh, I'm doing well. Thank you for uh, trying to teach me a new language. I'm uh, fairly limited in them. So uh, Mark is uh, currently displaying at the Betty Gray Gallery uh, until uh, uh, probably the end of July of 2022. I'd certainly encourage you if you're in the Sun River area to come by and view it. We're going to talk a little, little bit about Mark's art today and uh, and how that really is informed him as an artist. So Mark, I think the easiest way to always learn about an artist and, and what they think is to really start off with the origin of the artist themselves. Uh, you and I, when we first met, really bonded on the fact that we both adore our mothers. And so talk about uh, your family and your upbringing and uh, how that's influenced you as an artist. So uh, my mother has been a big influence for me, for my art. Um, she's the artist of her generation. The, the bloodline of the artist runs through her bloodline. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's the native blood comes through my dad's side of uh, Seneca descent. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but my mother has been... Uh, uh, major force for me with my art. Um, she has been uh, kind of what I refer to as kind of the Jiminy Cricket of um, uh, the production of my art. So she's she lives with me, and uh, she will basically enter uh, like her two cents of what she thinks you know should happen at at, at certain points, you know, and and I'll and, or I'll come into the condo condo and grab her. And bring her out to the studio too, because I know she has a good artist eye for things. And anytime I have um, kind of a stumbling block, you know, she's kind of there to kind of guide me um, as an outside voice, but still uh, with an artistic eye. Mm -hmm. So that, that helps me quite a bit. So your so your father is the is the native heritage, and uh, and I I know that you spent more time with your mother than your father, but your father certainly informed uh, some of your work as well. And then as you were uh, moving and you moved west uh, out here to Oregon, then you also got to know the Chinook tribe and, uh, and bonded there. So talk a little bit about uh, your experiences with Chief Gray Wolf and how that's influenced you as an artist. So yes, uh, Chief Gray Wolf was a fishing buddy of mine for many years. And uh, after some years, um, I asked him if I be could become an honorary Chinook tribal artist and represent mm -hmm. the Chinook with my art. And uh, he says, I'm, he told me, he said, Mark, I'm going to bring it up at the winter gathering ceremony. Mm -hmm. It's held at, in, at, in cat, at the Catholic plank house in Ridgefield, Washington each year in mm -hmm. uh, mid January. So he mentioned, he brought that up to the tribe at the end of the ceremony and uh, basically got, uh, I got a standing ovation so the, the tribe agreed in unison, which was mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. So, so that really has helped you, you know, understanding working with the tribe and, and understanding, you know, that you're representing the Chinook itself. Uh, that, first of all, that must be a, a good weight on you, but it's a weight in a positive fashion, right? Yes, yes. It's, uh, the Chinook is an unrecognized tribe uh, federally by the U.S. government. Uh, the, the government believes that, um, there was um, tuberculosis and malaria spread down through the um, Columbia River Valley and mm -hmm. wiped out the Chinook. But in actuality, what happened was um, Chief's um, third uh, great aunt uh, mm -hmm. took the Chinook uh, up into the highlands. Uh, she had a, a vision that, that there was um, uh, diseases that are gonna spread down the valley. So she took them up into the highlands and then the disease went through and basically killed the population that was there. And then uh, months later, she brought the, the tribe back down to that lower level, that, that, mm -hmm. that you know, ground level. 
um, elevation. And um, that's the, so the, it's under the understanding of the US government at this point that that, that uh, the disease that spread through wiped out the tribe, which in actuality it didn't. Mm-hmm. So This is your government at work folks. So, you know, we, we get that. So, uh, so in, in that, you know, all these things really inform you as an artist and, you know, your, your work is beautiful. I, I, de- I describe it as haunting as well. And we'll get into that a, a little bit as we go, but let's actually talk about the medium that you use in your tech- technique. So you, you start with paper. So talk a little bit about your technique and how you put that together. So what I refer to my work is painting with paper because I lay paper down in, in fields of color uh, like paint, and then I actually paint over paper after I have sealed it with a, a gel medium to mm-hmm. accept the paint. And um, I have found that um, there's usually my any problem that I have to solve is with the type of paper that I'm going to use to um, basically delineate the imagery. Um, mm-hmm. And, and usually my solutions come through nature. So I'll see if, for an example, I'll do uh, a girl lace for tree foliage, the leaves of trees, because there's quite a few holes in the paper mm-hmm. and I can layer, uh, for instance, um, a red over a yellow or yellow over a red for highlights. And it actually looks like the, the dappling of sunlight through a tree, uh, through leaves. Mm-hmm. And my mother actually saw that uh, we were taking a trip to the coast. I was showing it a gallery on the coast and um, she saw the light come through the trees uh, in the pastoral area of the, that we we're traveling through mm-hmm. and it was a bright sunny day. And she actually saw the light coming through the trees and she says, okay, so I can see why you use that paper now. So it's, so I, I like that. Uh, my solutions come by the the papers that I use and uh, ultimately by nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, I mean, in my my background as an artist is I, I work with wood, mostly live edge wood. And I always say that the wood tells me what it wants to be. And so at some point I'll, I'll look and I'll say, okay, well, that's a shelf or that's a piece of 2D art or uh, that's a table. And, and I let that shape the way that I do. So my, my material creates my art. You're a blend of that in traditional art because your material shapes your art, but at the same time, you've got that scene in your head uh, as you're creating it in the first place, correct? Correct. Well, I, I'm, I actually work from uh, seven different photographers, mainly, mm-hmm. mainly Edward Sheriff Curtis photos. He photographed uh, 80, tribes of the, of the Miss, uh, 80 tribes west of the Mississippi. Mm-hmm. and um, over 100 years ago. So I have a portrait series, a people landscape series, and a figurative series. And they're all, I, I always tell people, they're, they're from people that were living 100 years ago. Mm-hmm. So in some cases for the portraits, I'll tend to make the eyes a little larger than they were in reality, but not always. Mm-hmm. Um, they're in, I have that within my show at the Betty Gray Gallery. Um, there are certain pieces um, Candelaria and Desert Sun are two where the eyes were larger than they were in in reality. But when I did my uh, portrait of Princess Angeline, I started with, I always start with the eyes, but with her eyes, she had kind of um, smaller, um, kind of squintier eyes. And so I started Mm -hmm. with those and worked out um, as I normally do. But with hers, Mm -hmm. I, I purposely had to draw them smaller before I painted them in. Exactly. So let's say, let's talk about the, a couple of works. So Candelaria first. Uh, so describe that and talk a little bit about the, the background and what you were selecting or what type of papers you selected, how you had to paint over that. So give us a little bit of the origin of Candelaria and, and, and how that came to be the work it is. So uh, with Candelaria, I was working from a black and white photo. I usually work from either black and white or sepia tone photos. Mm-hmm. And uh, with that, uh, that gives me more room to choose my color palette. Um, I, I've worked from a, a more current photos, um, including my own, uh, but I always uh, copy it off as a black and white photo because I like to have control of what colors that I use. Mm-hmm. And uh, with Candelaria in particular, um, 
she exemplifies my two favorite colors actually is ultramarine blue and magenta. Uh -huh. And so I always, I basically just use two colors of paint, one light and one dark. And then I let the colors of the paper fill out the rest of the palette. Uh -huh. So I always have to make sure that the, the colors that I use, since I'm just limited, limit myself to two, that they work well together. And that's a different strengths too, because I use, usually for the portraits, I'll use uh, fluid acrylics. Uh -huh. And so I'll start off with doing, um, basically painting like a watercolorist where there's more water in, in my paint. And then by the time I get done, it's full strength. And there's as many as probably 10 to 12 layers of paint. Uh -huh. So yeah, I can, I really stretch the paint so you can see the translucency or opacity of the paint and, um, and the papers will kind of show through that also. Uh -huh. So you'll start off with the paper and, and were there any special papers that you used in the Candelaria that, uh, that you think are of note? That one in particular, I like, uh, I used a, um, so I use basically handmade and machine, machine made papers or uh, hand dyed or machine dyed papers. Mm -hmm. So with that one in particular, I remember in the upper right hand corner, there was um, a fern leaf embedded into a handmade paper. It's kind of a mm. thicker white paper. So I kind of like that there's um, usually when uh, collectors are viewing my artwork as a couple, one of them will be about eight to 10 inches away from the piece, kind of examining the papers. And the other one will be gallery distance basically nine feet back kind of taking it all in and mm -hmm. that's actually how I produce my artwork because I'm I'm looking at it up close and then I I do back away from it um and just to kind of make sure that everything is in sync so mm -hmm. and with with that one in particular um with the paint um there's only four pieces in my series of portraits that I painted where the paint would run uh -huh. so with that one when I had more water in my mix it was uh running and I have uh q-tips at the ready to kind of stop the running uh -huh. and, but I wasn't fast enough and it, it was so repetitive that um I didn't I, I basically gave up on on stopping it running and, and with that it basically with those drips it adds to like the melancholy type of exactly. feel that she has and makes it yeah. makes it more powerful so i, I, I was almost, yeah, I was thinking of, of it as a trail of tears exactly exactly and it's and th that's the way i view it is it's uh, with it repetitively happening with those those few pieces i figure that's that's the way it was meant to be mm -hmm. so then one of the other pieces that you have in the uh in the show as well is uh is desert sun i believe and that's a very different palette from the candelaria piece so talk a little bit about desert sun and the, some of the technique that you use there yes i'm known more for my brightly colored palette but with that piece in particular it had a very earthy feel to it so i used kind of more earth tones i used uh Payne's gray and oxide yellow mm -hmm. and um with the Payne's gray at full strength it's black but you get really nice bluish grays when you tint it out and the oxide yellow is an earthy yellow so i thought that would go well and complement the piece um and uh he basically had this look to him with that uh extreme lighting that he's kind of emerging from the earth and that's mm -hmm. that's why i thought it'd be good to use earth tones mm -hmm. and i've only been able to get the watery eyes uh in that particular piece uh i usually uh, make the eyes a little larger than they were in, in reality, unless uh, the eyes are very distinct, like the eyes in uh, Princess Angeline, another piece that I have, and, mm -hmm. and Chief Seattle's daughter. She's another piece that I have at the Betty Gray Gallery show. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, and with that one, um, basically the papers kind of show through. I, I kind of think of them as kind of like window panes. Uh, they, they, the paper shows through where the paint isn't mm -hmm. um, and both with desert sun and candelaria um, i painted out to the edge on all four sides so it's when i'm in talking to collectors they're always kind of amazed when i tell them the actual physical uh, dimension of it because since i painted out to the edge with those they look a lot larger than they are in reality mm -hmm. uh, even when you're viewing it in person so mm -hmm. that's that's one thing I like about that those two pieces in particular, Desert Sun and Candelaria. Mm -hmm. 
it's uh so where do you take your art from here what's your you've been doing this for a couple of decades now and where do you think you're going to take your art or what are some of the things that you want to do next well i always i i'm always i'm very goal-oriented person so um but sometimes um god comes in and and kind of i get things that happen that come out of nowhere uh just like just well as uh case in point last year uh toward the end of the year i was approached by um an independent film, film company that wanted me to do the art for their movie poster uh -huh. they just contacted me out of the blue and i had never really thought of um I mean, early on when I was in graphic design, I was, you know, it was my ultimate thing would be to do a poster or a children's book cover. Uh -huh. And uh, they contacted me because they loved what I did. And actually the um, Oscar winning director that was part of that team, Reika Zatabshi, uh, she said that my artwork after viewing it is cinematic, which that was the ultimate compliment that I could get from, from her at her status you know and yeah. her cinematographer really loved my work too and and one of his favorite pieces actually was desert sun and it that made sense after he commented on that because he's kind of known for his dramatic lighting like that with color and mm -hmm. um so i thought that was an ultimate compliment coming from him too so you never really know um i mean i'm i'm pretty goal oriented I've, it's been a, a dream of mine to show it the sun river resort lodge because I knew that my work would fit in really well there with um, the style and technique and the, the subject matter that I have. And uh, so that was a goal that I had um, over a year ago. Um, and then my mother has uh, been chronically ill over that, mm -hmm. over that time. And we didn't know if she would actually be able to make it uh, to my show or be on this earth, but um, she'll, she'll be there and she'll be, dressed up as the fashionista that she always has been <laughs> <laughs> and and your mother is a is a is a wonderful and enjoyable person and you know i'm i'm glad that she uh has influenced you so heavily and and that re influence really shows through both uh you know and and how her personality is imparted to you so it's great to see uh both your mother's influence the various native influences that are coming through and your amazing technique and and just vision and insight uh, really combining into a solid piece of uh, of art that that becomes you. So uh, for those of you, again, that uh, do have the ability to get to the Betty Gray Gallery, uh, the show will be running through the end of July uh, 2022. Uh, you can also uh, see markdshelton.com, I believe, is your website uh, where most of your work is, correct? Uh, and Mark, it, it's great getting to know you and uh, it's great getting to understand your technique and I look forward to working with you much more in the future. Thank you. I do also.